this uh, map, this eight and a half foot by six foot uh, geological map of England and Wales, is the world's earliest geological map. It was published in 1815, uh, and it was the work of one man. William Smith, he was a surveyor. He was a canal surveyor, so he spent a lot of his time working in sort of Gloucestershire and Somerset. And what he noticed during his surveying, he became interested in the rocks, the different types of rocks. He was also interested in fossils as well. And what he realized was that you could actually use fossils to correlate rocks in different areas. So he'd see maybe a fossil ammonite in one canal cutting a few miles away, he'd see the same thing in the same sequence. And he realized that you could use this to build up a picture, a map of the geology of the country. You know, it's like stripping the land bare of all the plants, of the soil, and what the actual geology would have looked like. What was amazing about this map of William Smith's is that it covered the entire country. It covered England and Wales, part of Scotland. But he was working from a position of really no knowledge. He, nobody else had really done this. And so his observations across the country, and it's really quite staggering what he achieved, one man achieved, probably in about sort of 15, 20 years of being out in the field, traipsing across the hills, recording the rocks, and actually laying them out on this map. It's, it's incredibly good. It's very accurate. You could still use it today. And if you compare the current geological map of, of Great Britain, there are amazing similarities. It's not too dissimilar. And the British Geological Survey still uses the same color scheme that William Smith devised. So chalk is represented by green. Um, the limestones that run up through Lincolnshire are represented by yellow. And these are still done like this today. It was received in sort of different ways, I think, because the fledgling Geological Society of London was established in 1809. Um, and these were sort of gentleman geologists, if you like, amateurs, but very wealthy individuals. Smith was not part of that scene. He came from a very humble background. His father was a blacksmith. Um, and so they, in a way, didn't really want to know about what he was doing. The Geological Society of London produced their own map a few years after Smith's map came out. Well, his, the map started being produced in 1815. Um, the one we have here, we know from the records, was actually signed off by Smith and his signature is actually on the map on the 23rd of January in 1816. But they were continually being produced until about 1819 and he was amending them all the time as he got new information. But at the same time, the Geological Society of London were producing their own map um, led by a guy called Greneff. Um, and there are these accusations that Greneff plagiarised some of Smith's information and so on, whether that's true or not. Um, I'm not sure, um, but it meant that instead of everybody buying Smith's map, they all started buying this other one that Greneff was producing, a similar very large scale map. And this meant that poor old Smith ran out of money and he ended up in debtor's jail. Um, so he was in prison for a few months. And when he came out again, his nephew, John Phillips, who was a geologist, looked after him and he resumed his work as a, as a surveyor. Um, and well, you think, well, that was the end of poor old William Smith. But then what this map did, you could regard it as the crucial um, map that started geology as a modern science. Having this map meant that people knew what the rocks were in a particular area. And it's iconic. It's like, yes, as somebody said, it's like the Magna Carta of geology. It's the beginning of modern geology as a science. That's why it's so important.